Hey everyone, my name is Paul. I'm one of the teaching pastors here at Epic. Mania, can you help me welcome everyone who's joining us from other locations right now? All right, Center City, Fairmount, Roxborough, I see you. I don't really see you, but you know what I mean. We see you, we love you. Um, so here's the thing, I want you to think about this, right? Have you ever been in line, you're trying to get in line at the grocery store maybe, um, and you're in a hurry, right? You're trying to pick the shortest line, the fastest line, which by the way, I'm the worst at. I always pick the wrong line. I always pick the wrong line. So you get in line, uh, you, you, know, you finally commit to the line that you're gonna go with. You're like, all right, I have a good feeling about this. And you're in it, you're in a hurry. You're like, all right, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then the person in front of you just starts paying with coins, right? Like it's five cents, it's 10 cents. 25, and you're like, oh no, no. Um, or, and I know this has probably happened to most, if not all of us, uh, have you ever been driving on the road? Uh, you're having a grand old time, just a delightful time. You're, you're jamming to your favorite Hootie and the Blowfish song. And is that, is that not what we're listening to these days? Is that, really? I only want to be with you. All right, that's enough of that. We had a period in our country where there was a band called Hootie and the Blowfish. Just think about that for a second. I don't know. Anyway, you're driving, right? You're having a good old time, and then someone comes speeding by, cuts you off, almost kills you, right? Now, here's the deal. It's, it's honesty time, all right? Time to get real honest. What's usually your reaction in a moment like that? Or, or at least what's the initial reaction in a moment like that? You know, is, is, it like, is it like, oh, hey, hey, thank you for cutting me off, sir. You have a wonderful day, all right? You just have a great day. I love the lights that you put on your Dodge Neon. Really ups the value. Great decision. <laughs> have a good one. <laughs> is that it? Probably not, right? You're a liar if you say yes. You're a liar. Uh, you know, the, the first initial reaction is to what? It's to get upset, right? Or at least to be annoyed or something like that. It's the natural response. And so here's the thing. Here's what happens in scenarios like this, okay? We automatically start assuming the worst about the other person in a scenario, right? They're taking forever. Like, what's wrong with them? Like, what's going on? Like, who raised this person? You know, this guy cut me off, he's a jerk. Now, you know what? Basically, he's a criminal. And then depending on how honest we want to get or how bad your road rage is, you know, you're going to say, I hope he gets what he deserves. I hope he gets what's coming to him. I hope that he loses a sock in the laundry this week and it drives him nuts. Now, as bad as that is, I'm probably thinking that you guys think way worse. Some of us think way worse things, right? Again, being honest, being honest. But we assume the worst about people in these scenarios, right? But when it's us... When it's me, we want people to do what? We want people to assume the best, right? Uh, here's the thing. I've held up the line at the store who knows how many times for all kinds of ridiculous reasons. Like right now, my, credit, my, my wallet's doing this weird thing where my credit card's like just stuck in my wallet and I cannot pull it out. For, for, I, I'm just like here, I'm at the line. I'm like, I'm so sorry. This is ridiculous. It happened to me this week early in the morning, and I think I just wasn't fully awake, and so I had, my fingers had the strength of a baby's, and I'm like, I can't, I just can't, I'm looking at this huge line behind me, I'm like, sorry, I'm just, uh, this is ridiculous, I'm really sorry, I apologize. Uh, I have cut people off while driving before, it's been an honest mistake, I didn't see them, I didn't mean to do it, and, you know, and I'll even apologize, and you know, say, hey, I'm so, I'm so sorry, so sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad. Um, they do not accept my apology. <laughs> they very expressively do not accept my apology. <laughs> so is that I've heard people say, right, that when it's other people, we want justice. But when it's us, we want mercy. And so we're going to talk about something similar today. So when it's us, we want people to assume the best because we know our intentions, right? But when it's someone else, we tend to assume the worst about them. And now, believe it or not, this does have to do with our current series, Ghost Stories. And so I promise it's all going to make sense here. So in this series, we're, talking, we're telling some not-so-scary stories about the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Uh, last week, our lead pastor, Kent, told us about how it's important that we don't neglect or forget about the Holy Spirit in our lives. So, so many of us are okay with God as our Father, God as our provider. We're okay with Jesus as our Savior, as our forgiver, but we just kind of neglect the Holy Spirit. 
uh, which is a big deal. You know, scripture says that when you follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit now lives in you and wants to work in you. That's what happens. You follow Jesus, now you have the Holy Spirit with you. So it's like, What are we gonna do with this? We can't waste this, right? So if we stop with just God the Father, we stop with just God the Son, we are missing out. The Holy Spirit brings so much to the table, spiritually speaking, okay? The Holy Spirit draws us closer to God, to Jesus. The Holy Spirit comforts and advises and encourages us. The Holy Spirit gives us power and strength to do what God asks us to do. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us. The Holy Spirit helps us move past the sins that we don't have the power to overcome on our own. The Holy Spirit bears witness and reminds us that we're children of God. And that's just some of the stuff that the Holy Spirit does. And that's why this series is so crucial to, for us. And this is what Kent told us last week, that God has so much more for us. God has so much more for us. He has so much more for us than just a one-dimensional faith or two-dimensional faith. And, and the Holy Spirit is what God uses to take us to that so much more. So today we're gonna focus on a crucial way the Holy Spirit works in our lives, the way that he speaks for us and the way that he speaks to us. And here's the deal. If you've ever gone through some really rough times, some deep, dark valleys, and and you have walked away from God or faith or church because of that, or if you've at least strongly thought about it, if you've stayed angry at God for long periods of time, today is for you. If you're there right now in that place, today is for you. And really, today's for all of us because I can promise you this, and it's the same promise that Jesus makes that this life will bring us trouble. In this life, we will have trouble. Do not shoot the messenger, please. Well, we are gonna have some rough times. At some point in the future, you're gonna go through something so tough, so difficult that you may very well be tempted to walk away from God or from faith or from church or or at least stay angry for a long time. So I hope that today gives you what you need so that you can weather those storms and come out stronger on the other side. Now let's pray first. God, I thank you so much that you've given us your Holy Spirit. God, I thank you for what you have to speak to us through your Holy Spirit today, what you have in store for us using your Holy Spirit today. God, help us to hear, help us to embrace that. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so as I was saying before, all right, there are times in life when we want people to assume the best when it comes to us and our actions and our intentions, and there are times when we, we just kind of assume the worst when it comes to other people and their actions and their intentions. And so here's what happens when you assume the worst in someone else, all right, when something happens, when someone cuts you off, when someone hurts you, when someone does this. Uh, we, there's a gap in knowledge, isn't there? There's a gap in knowledge. Uh, we can't know someone else's thoughts, but we fill in that gap, we fill in what their intentions are, and we usually fill in that gap with bad intentions. So when I mess up, honest mistake, I didn't mean to do that. When someone else does that, off with their heads, right? Off with their heads. So this leads me to a principle that has become one of the most important relational principles in my life. And I really do have to thank our lead pastor, Kent, for this, because uh, he, behind the scenes, uh, with me personally, uh, with the staff, with his friends, uh, he's been driving this home since I've met him. And here it is. It's very simple. Believe the best. Believe the best. So believe the best of each other and assume the best of each other. And this is biblical. Um, so in Galatians 5, and 23, it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gen- faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So this is the fruit of the spirit. And I have just a couple that I wanna emphasize right now. So you have love and joy, but you have peace, patience, kindness, goodness, you have faithfulness gentleness, self-control. And so when it says the fruit of, here's the thing, we can kind of read that verse and sometimes we act like that's the stuff that we want to happen to us. Like that's the way other people should act to me. But when this passage says it's the fruit of the spirit, that means that that's what I do. 
That's the way the Holy Spirit shows up in my life. This is what I demonstrate to others. That's the fruit of the Spirit. So here's a little challenge. The next time that you're stuck in line behind someone who's like paying in all coins, right? You know, to, to actually have some patience, so, some, some kindness, so, some goodness, some gentleness, some self-control, right? To, to believe the best of this person. You know, here's the deal. What if that person is paying in coins because that's all they have? You know, the next time that that someone cuts you off on on the road, you know, instead of jumping immediately to anger, why don't you try to believe the best, right? What if it was a mistake? What if that person is truly on their way to an emergency? And here's the thing, even if they're not, what do you have to lose in that scenario? What do you have to lose in that scenario? Absolutely nothing. If you assume the worst, you're just angry and miserable. If you assume the best, you let it go. And you'd be surprised when you practice patience and kindness and peace, and gentleness, and self-control, like what that does also for your countenance, your mood, everything. Now, you might be thinking here, like, all right, Paul, that's easy enough with some stranger on the highway when I'm in my car and I can't get out and say something directly to him or beat him up, all right? If I believe in the best of someone, should, so should I just leave my car unlocked? Should I leave my house unlocked, right? Just believe the best that I won't get robbed by somebody? Heck No. Heck no. This is Philly, man. You serious? You lost your mind? Lock your car doors. Lock your house. Add a few more locks on. Make sure you have a good security system, right? Uh, uh, Lock up your bikes. As long as you want to keep your stuff. That's all I'm saying, right? Now, obviously... You need to use some situational wisdom here, especially with strangers. But believing the best of people is at its most powerful and its most relevant here for us. Anyway, with the people you know, your relationships. So believing the best of someone before you believe the worst of them, I'm telling you this, it could change your life today. I have, there's a lot of other good stuff in this today, but, but this one principle might change your life and change your relationships. It'll change your life because it's going to change the way you deal with conflict in your life. So here's what happens almost all the time. Someone you love or someone you're friends with, uh, someone you work with uh, does something annoying or does something hurtful to you. And our natural tendency then in that moment is is to read that person's mind, assume their intentions, and we usually assume something bad you know, they did this on purpose or, or, or they're just dumb or they should know better or they don't really care about me because if they cared, then they wouldn't do this or they wouldn't do this again. And sometimes, this is what happens in these scenarios too, if you've had enough time to think too, you've had enough time to let this stew a little bit, you know, we start to invent these vast conspiracies about what this person's intentions were. And it's not even limited to this one thing that they did, right? It's the thing they also did yesterday and last week and last month and last year and five years ago and back and back and back and back and back and back and back, and back, and back until the beginning of time, right? And they have this vast conspiracy where they've been trying to hurt me since ever since the, ever, Adam and Eve. This has happened. I don't know how, but that's how, that's what's going on. We assume the worst. And here's what happens. When we assume the worst, oftentimes our first response is to accuse. Our first response is to throw out an accusation. And here's the deal. When we rush to accusation, it's poison for our relationships. It's poison. It's poison poison. When you believe in the worst of the other person, it is poison. And do you know how many times that I have jumped the gun and completely misinterpreted why someone did what they did? Do you know how many times I've assumed the worst of someone and found out I was wrong and I just made the whole situation worse? Do you know the bitterness that we cultivate and breed when we believe the worst any other people in our relationships. Now, here's where the Holy Spirit does some work. In times of conflict, in times when we're upset or when we're hurt, uh, when we're naturally wanting to assume the worst and, and hurl accusations, there's a voice that whispers that there's a better way. There's a person, a spirit, who whispers, hey, 
Hold off on the anger for a second. Hold off on the conspiracy theories. Hold off on the accusation. What about peace? What about patience? What about kindness? What about gentleness? What about self-control? And yes, even now, even in the midst of your pain and your frustration, what if you believed better? Here's the thing. If you believe the best of someone, even if they don't deserve it, here's what that practically looks like. Uh, You ask a question or you seek to understand them before you hurl an accusation, which is, by the way, different than just letting someone walk all over you, right? It doesn't make what they did. If they did something wrong, if they actually hurt you, that doesn't make it okay. You're just not hurling accusations first. You're seeking to understand first. I can't tell you, in my life, This has saved my relationships, so much conflict, so many misunderstandings, so much unnecessary hostility. And and as a teacher, and I teach middle school students, I cannot tell you how much this has transformed my classroom and my relationship with my students because I don't just rush to accuse them anymore. Even if they're doing something wrong, I don't need to rush to accuse them. I rush to understand them. And when someone knows that you are on their side, when someone doesn't have to question whether you're on opposite sides, when they know that you're on their side, it makes a world of difference. It makes a world of difference. And that is Holy Spirit work. Believing the best is Holy Spirit work. And even more than it plays out in our personal relationships, it plays out in our relationship with God. So I want to take a look at a, at a passage here and what it has to show us about the way that Holy Spirit communicates for and to us. So here it is. And, and let me just say this. It is such good news. It is such good news. So here it is, Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Here's why this passage is amazing, incredible. It is such good news. So in life, when the floor drops out from underneath you, when the storm hits, when you're in the valley, when you've been taking punch after punch after punch and you've dropped and you've hit the mat, whatever imagery, whatever metaphor you wanna use for when life is tough, in those moments, the Holy Spirit, your advocate has your back. He has your back. Have you ever been there in that place where you think that things can't get any worse? and then they do, right? You don't think they can get any worse, and then they do, and you know that you should pray. You know that you should pray. Someone has told you maybe that you should pray, right? But the only words you have are something like this, like, God, this sucks. (laughs) God, why? 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 Why can't you do this? Why didn't you do this? Why is this happening? Why is, what is going on? God, where are you? God, I am not, honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of you right now. And that's the best you can muster. Or maybe it's so rough that you actually have no words. No words, zero. You can't even bring yourself to say words. Have you ever been there? Romans says that in those very moments, The Holy Spirit helps us. The Holy Spirit steps in our behalf when we don't have the right words to pray to God, when we don't know what the next step is, that Holy Spirit speaks for us. He groans for us. He expresses our pain, our anguish, our confusion in a way that we can't. It says that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, which means that the Spirit intervenes on our behalf. The Spirit intervenes on our behalf, even when I can't get it right, even when I don't know the right words. Isn't that great news? That is amazing news that you don't have to have all of the right words, that you don't have to have it all together for God to hear you, for you to come to him with your grief or your pain or your frustration or your anger. 
And the Spirit is your advocate, and he speaks to God for you in ways that you can't. So take comfort in that, that there is peace in that knowledge that he has your back. Now, I have more good news, but I'm going to warn you right now, this is going to be tough for some of us to swallow. All right, this is the, the kind of good news that, that's hard to hear. But, but ultimately, it's good for us. It's going to lead us to what's best for us. So here's the thing. Not only does the Spirit advocate for us to God, not only does he, does he speak to God on our behalf when we don't have the words, but, and this is really important, he speaks to us on God's behalf. The Holy Spirit doesn't just speak for us to God. The Holy Spirit speaks to us on God's behalf. So what the Holy Spirit does isn't just a one-way radio from us to God. It's a two-way radio. So he's speaking for God to us, which is good news, but most of the time, we don't like this news. Here's why. The Holy Spirit speaks to us even when we don't want to hear it. When we don't want to hear it, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. When we're in pain, when we're frustrated, when we're fed up with our circumstances, we, and by we, I mean all of us, you, me, every single human being who breathes air on this planet, when we're in that kind of situation, we are highly sensitive, we are highly stubborn, and we are highly defensive. That's almost all of us. And you know this, you know what I'm talking about. You know this because we've all been in an argument with someone and we know there's a right thing to say and there's a wrong thing to say here. Do I choose door A or door B? I'm gonna go with door B, the wrong thing, right? Or we know that, that the right thing to do is to stay calm and to work it out, but, but we leave. Instead, we slam a door, we take a dig at the other person. We know it's not gonna help. We know it's not gonna help. We say it anyway right? We all have that person in our lives who we avoid at certain times because we know that they're going to tell us the truth that I don't want to hear. We all have that person. We've all been in that place where, where that person's going to speak some truth to us. We know they're right, but we're having none of it, right? Here's why. Because we're not done being angry yet, we're not done being frustrated yet. We're not done shaking our fist at the sky yet. And this is why we get so upset with people who, who kind of say the cliche things. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm talking about? Like they say the cliche things to us, you know, like God has a plan. God is good. God is great all the time. Right? God this, God that, blah, 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 whatever. Right? We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear it because we're not done with our anger yet. Here's the deal though. Look at what Jesus says uh, in John 14, 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. This is what the Holy Spirit does. He speaks to you and reminds you of everything that God says. The advocate is gonna remind you of what the truth is. Now, here's the deal. This is very important to us. The, the Spirit speaks truth to us even when it's truth we don't want to hear. This could be a game changer for some of us today. The Spirit speaks truth for us even when it's truth we don't want to hear and also when we don't want to hear it. I call that tough love. The Bible calls it conviction. It's conviction. It's telling us the truth we don't want to hear and or telling us the truth when we don't want to hear it. And here's the thing, the truth, the annoying, stupid truth that we don't want to hear when we're in pain, the annoying truth that we don't want to hear when we're in the wrong, when we're not where God wants us to be, when we're doing something we're not supposed to be doing, it's the same cliche stuff that we don't want to hear from our family and friends, right? The Holy Spirit goes to God on our behalf and, say, and, and, here's, and, we, and expresses all of our pain, all of our frustration, all of our anger. He does that, right? The Holy Spirit does that for us. But then God says this. He says, hey, hey, child, my hurting, grieving, 
wandering, confused, angry, beautiful, cherished child. I've heard you. I've heard you. I hear you. But now, hear me. I have plans for you to give you a hope and a future, Jeremiah 29, 11. I heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds, Psalm 147, 3. I'm merciful and gracious and slow to anger and abounding in love, Psalm 103, 8. Your thoughts aren't my thoughts, which is a nice way of saying, I know more than you. I see what you don't see. I'm smarter than you. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, I will never leave you or forsake you. Deuteronomy 31, 6, I work everything out for the good of those who love me according to my purposes, Romans 8, 28, which by the way, is the verse right after the verse that we looked at earlier that tells us the Holy Spirit speaks for us and looks out for us. We don't want to hear any of that though. When I'm, when I'm in grief, when, when I'm in pain, when I'm angry, when I'm confused, especially when I'm angry with God, when I'm in the wrong, when, I, when I'm doing something that I'm not supposed to be doing, the natural response is do exactly what we do with the people in our lives. We believe the worst. We hurl accusations. We get defensive. We pull away from God. We put distance between us and God. And it is poison for your relationship. It's poison for your relationship. And Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth. Now, the big difference between believing the best about another person and believing the best about God is that the truth about God is even better than you can even imagine. It's even better than any person that you could believe the best about. That's God. So the thing is, when you believe the best in another person, what you're actually doing is you're giving them the benefit of the doubt. And it might be true and it might not be true but you're putting yourself in a, in a heart position so that you don't hurl an accusation first, but you're giving them the benefit of the doubt. It might be true, it might not be true, but with, the, with God, here's the thing, the spirit of truth gives us absolute confidence about God's heart towards us. It is always perfect love. It is always perfect love. Charles Spurgeon said, God is too good to be unkind. He is too wise to be unconfused. If I cannot trace his hand, I can always trust his heart. If I cannot trace his hand, I can always trust his heart, which is another way of saying, if I can't figure out where God is in all this mess and what he's doing, I can still trust his heart. So this is what the spirit does. The spirit reminds us, believe the best of God. Not just believe the best of the person in your life, your husband, your wife, your mom, your dad your brother, your sister, your coworkers. Believe the best of God. It's the voice we don't want to hear. It's the voice we want to ignore. But it's the voice, if you listen, that's leading you to what's best. So this is why, honestly, I give a break to people who might say some of those cliche things uh, when I'm in pain or when I'm in grief. It just doesn't feel like the right time to say that or whenever it was. I give those people a break. And this is why. The, the timing may not have been right. Uh, the tone may not have been right, may not have been perfect. But if I discount truth every time I'm not in the mood to hear it, I'm blocking a whole lot of good in my life while allowing myself to stay in the bad. If I discount truth every single time that I'm not in the mood for it, I'm blocking a whole lot of good and I'm staying in the bad. So the sooner that I can learn to accept truth instead of making excuses for why I shouldn't listen, even when it's hard, the better off I'm gonna be. So here's the deal. When I was younger, with my first car and when I was poor, uh, you know what I really hated? Uh, I hated when I, when I would start to hear a noise that a car shouldn't make. You know, uh, it's, a, it's like a buzzing or a knocking or a grinding or a roaring or a what's, what is that? What is that? What's that noise? Oh no. Um, because I knew what that stuff meant, right? I knew it meant a really expensive trip to the mechanic that I can't afford. So you know what I did? Turn the radio up. <laughs> blast that hootie and a blowfish. 
I've never blasted Hootie and the Blowfish from my car. I apologize. I just turned that radio out. I want to turn up the noise, okay? Turn up the noise, because if I don't have to, if I can't hear it, I don't have to deal with it, right? If I can't hear it, it's not happening. If my car is still driving straight, then we're good, all right? I don't, I'm not even gonna look at that smoke that's coming out in the back. Don't worry about it, all right? But I was young then, and so, so dumb. So dumb. Now, and, and this is true. I say, I, every once in a while, I do this intentionally. I, because I, I usually, almost always, I have music on or I'm listening to something in my car. Um, but I'll take times where I intentionally turn everything off and I listen to my car. I listen to my car. I listen to what it's telling me. And this is a true story. Earlier this week, I, I shut everything off. I start listening to my car, and sure enough, I start hearing this like this little bit of roaring from my rear wheel um, on the passenger side. Um, and so I checked in a couple more times later that day to make sure that I wasn't just like hearing something or whatever. And that is indeed a noise it shouldn't be making. Um, so now what am I going to do this week? I, I'm taking my car in, right? Um, so actually, if you guys want to like help pray for my car, if you want to lay hands on my car <laughs> on that wheel, um, you can do that. I already tried it. It didn't work. Um, so maybe you guys can help me out with that. Um, but here's the thing. 10 years ago, I, would, I wouldn't do that, right? I didn't want to deal with that. I, I would turn up the volume and I just don't want to hear it and I just wait for it to get worse. Um, I'm now old enough to know better. I'm now old enough to know better. So you may think, you might be sitting here right now and you may think that it is unimaginable, that it is impossible, that perhaps it's even a little offensive to you to think that you could listen to the Holy Spirit reminding you that God is good that God is great, that God has a plan for you when you're in such pain, when you're so angry. You think that could be unimaginable to do that. I will say this, for now, yes. But the more that you let the Holy Spirit do its work, the more that you learn to listen to the Holy Spirit, it is 100% possible to be in a moment of grief, of pain, of being angry at God and defaulting to believing the best, refraining from hurling an accusation first. As the Holy Spirit has done work in my life, um, years of work, by the way, years of work. It's not gonna happen overnight. Years of work. I I'm now so much quicker to listen in times of pain, to believe the best before I accuse God. I'm so much quicker to acknowledge when I'm wrong and repent and turn back toward God. And there are people in my life whom I respect greatly who are so much further along in their walk with God than I am. And they've been able to, over the years, allow the Holy Spirit to become the primary voice in their lives during their times of grief rather than the voice of accusation. They can tell you how much better their lives are because they've learned to listen when the Holy Spirit speaks, but that's been years of allowing the Holy Spirit to do that, getting used to his voice and then learning to trust that voice. But it is possible. That's what you need to know. It is possible. You might think it's unfathomable to think that in a time when you're so upset. It is possible. That's Holy Spirit work. If you do that, if you can begin to learn to, to turn down the noise in your life, if you can listen to that voice, even when it's speaking truth that you don't want to hear, it has the power to completely change your life. It's the voice that will draw you closer to the people in your life as you believe the best in them. It's the voice that will draw you closer to God because it's whispering, believe the best, trust me and believe the best. It's the voice when you've let your anger or doubt or whatever put distance between you and God. It's that voice that's whispering, come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. It's the voice we sometimes don't wanna hear in our worst moments, but it's the voice that's most capable of bringing us out of our worst moments. So today, I, I want us to learn to listen to the Spirit, to, to learn to believe the best of God. It, and it can mean everything. It can mean everything for you, for your family, for your relationships, for your future, and what God has in store for you. 
listen and believe the best. Let's pray. God, we cannot thank you enough that you've sent us your Holy Spirit to be our advocate, to intercede for us, to speak on our behalf when we don't have the words. God, when we're frustrated, when we're angry, when we're upset, when we're afraid, when we don't know what to say, God, we thank you that our Holy Spirit speaks to you, that we can come to you in those moments, that you hear us, God. And I thank you, God, that you continue to use the Holy Spirit to speak truth to us, even when we don't want to hear it. God, I thank you for speaking truth to me in my life in the moments when I needed it the most, but I didn't want to hear it the most. I thank you that you are good, that you always, that your heart is always perfect love. Help us to listen, God. Help us to embrace your voice. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.